I, I will say Alec is entitled to a new trial, and he will get a new trial, whether it's by Judge Newman, by the Court of Appeals, by the Supreme Court, or by the federal courts. Attorneys for Alec Murdoch, confident they have enough information to vacate his conviction in the murders of his wife, Maggie, and son, Paul. Again, I've been doing this almost half a century. Never have I seen anything approaching this. It's the latest chapter in the Murdoch saga that never seems to end. This case will steal your life if it doesn't take it. Thanks for joining us here on Law & Crime. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy. Alec Murdoch's attorneys dropped a bomb in their motion for a new trial where they claim the clerk of courts in Colleton County tampered with the jury. Over the weekend, I caught up with them at CrimeCon in Orlando. We discussed a number of things, including the motion, and they also revealed at CrimeCon who is paying them. First of all, how are you enjoying yourselves here at CrimeCon? We're having a big time. I mean, it's it's um, it's just, you know it's a its own microcosm, and in this microcosm, as ridiculous as it sounds, we're celebrities. Right, I you mean, are yeah. celebrities. You know, and it's um, we get on a plane tomorrow and go back to Columbia, we won't be celebrities anymore. So we're enjoying it right now. There's a huge turnout. I mean, a lot of people here, so and they know they know the they're down in the weeds on on the Murdoch case and they want to talk to us about cell phones and blood sending. I mean it's just and it's sort of interesting to us to have that kind of very finite focused interest in a case you know we worked on for months and months and months and months mm -hmm. getting ready right. and then trying it for six weeks. Millions around the world watch the Murdoch trial tuning in each day for six weeks. This is character evidence which is precluded. The jury deliberated for three hours guilty before finding Murdoch guilty of the murders of his wife, Maggie and son, Paul. Now the woman who read that guilty verdict, Colleton County Clerk of Court, Becky Hill, is at the center of Murdoch's motion for a new trial. Harputlian and Griffin say two jurors have told them that Hill had private conversations with the jury foreperson and that she tried to sway jurors to find Murdoch guilty. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the motion for new trial because there are some really serious allegations in there about jury tampering, um, things that I've never heard of in happening in a trial. Join the crowd. We haven't either. Yeah, and when you know we interviewed these jurors and we started hearing what they reported in their affidavits, I mean, it really was jaw dropping. I mean, it, I mean, I don't, I've never heard of it, and you know, I've been doing this thirty-five plus years. Dick's doing it. 50. 50 years, and this is um, unheard of, unheard of. And, you know, these jurors that have come forward came forward on their own free will, and they have nothing to gain by giving us this information. In fact, you know, they've, they're putting themselves out there and, and shows real courage, but there's no doubt in our mind they're telling the truth. And so we're looking forward to having a hearing where we can explore it everything under oath. Prosecutors have been tight-lipped about the allegations of jury tampering, filing a brief response with the Court of Appeals in which they concede a hearing on the claims may be necessary to resolve the issues. Prosecutors also took issue with Murdoch, not filing a sworn statement saying he didn't know about the jury tampering claims prior to the verdict. The sworn statement is, I did not know somebody was fixing the jury during the trial. That's the affidavit. I mean, how ludicrous is that? And there, and there is no procedural requirement for that. I mean, there's a case from the 70s where a judge did not grant an evidentiary hearing after a guy had pled guilty because he came forward and said, I was, uh, you know, that I had evidence that would exculpate me. And the judge said, well, you needed to prove that you didn't have the evidence before you pled guilty. It was a completely different factual scenario than what we have here, so, so but, but we fixed it. Prosecutors also say objective investigation by SLED is ongoing. They also say the inquiry has also revealed significant factual disputes with Murdoch's claims. And we see in their filing, that they say there's some discrepancies. I don't know how they say that when they haven't interviewed the jurors who've given us affidavits. I mean, the question is, are those jurors telling the truth? It doesn't mean that, that if other jurors didn't hear what these jurors heard, that the, that the jurors that came forward are lying about it. It just means maybe she didn't say it in front of the other jurors.
Harpootlian now says his team has four jurors who have raised concerns about feeling pressured to reach a guilty verdict. One of the interesting aspects is they all report that once the jury went out, they were told, you're not going home. You know, if you don't reach a verdict quickly, we're going to have you put up for the night. And you six smokers that we've given smoking breaks to for the last six weeks, no more smoking breaks. So you don't get to smoke a cigarette until you reach a verdict. I've never heard of such a thing. So um, it's that kind of hot boxing. Somebody wanted um, a quick verdict, and we're going to make the folks with nicotine addiction have to suffer withdrawal until they reach a the verdict. One of the jurors who spoke with Murdoch's lawyers was juror number 785. She became known as Egg Lady because she asked to retrieve a dozen eggs from the jury room after she was excused before closing arguments. She filed an affidavit in which she said Becky Hill told the jurors before Murdoch testified not to be fooled by him. Egg Lady also claims that Becky Hill approached her about a Facebook post by her ex-husband in which he claimed that Egg Lady had already made up her mind. She claims that she told Hill she hadn't made up her mind about the verdict and the juror's ex-husband filed an affidavit saying he didn't post what Hill had claimed on Facebook. Attorney Joe McCullough, who used to practice law with Dick Harputlian, represents Egg Lady and another Murdoch juror. I think that... that uh... All of the jurors I've spoken with, and currently I represent two, and one who continued to serve through the verdict, and um, so there, there's, uh, because of these affidavits that they have given, uh, there's obviously a consistency that's troubling, and I mean, I think, you know, it's going to be incumbent on the system to figure out what happened and whether anything of consequence happened. A transcript also reveals that even Judge Newman was concerned that Becky Hill had spoken with this juror. He said, I, I'm surprised I'll, that the clerk would be interrogating a juror about this matter and not bringing it to me. And I told Judge Newman, I'm surprised too. Now what we put in our, our motion that we intend to file attached in the Court of Appeals is that whole subject matter was about a Facebook page post on that was is non-existent. I mean it, it, it totally is, fabricated. It's totally fabricated and and we filed something here recently uh, um, further evidence of the fabrication of that and, and and we're we're bewildered as to how that came up and we're even more bewildered why SLED goes out and interviews these two tenants of the egg lady but doesn't go out and interview the ex-husband who allegedly put on Facebook that I just got drunk with the juror and she told me all about the trial and SLED never interviews that guy? What does that tell you? Does that tell you that SLED knows that was BS? Or, I mean, you know, those are questions that need answers and SLED is in no position to answer those questions. Absolutely, and understand as these things are being raised, we're in a trial, we're, you know, we're focused on the next witness, the forensics, the cell phone. I mean, it's, these were so, sort of side issues, and we never in a million years believed somebody was tampering with the jury. I mean, could not, you, when we interviewed these jurors, and it wasn't immediately after the trial, it was at some point, probably five months after the trial, what we heard was so shocking that we feel like chumps. Harputlian and Griffin also raised the issue of Hill having several conversations with the foreperson, even as the jurors toured Moselle. Well, you know, we, we, we thought it was a little strange. We thought that, of course, the judge went too. We thought that was a little strange. I mean, and some of the jurors had questions. They asked the judge. The forelady of the jury spent almost the entire time with the clerk. At the jury view. And I was there. I saw it. So, Are you a witness? No, I, I'm not a witness. I mean, I saw any more than I'm a witness to anything that happens in the courtroom. But um, I would think uh, that we need to take the sworn testimony of the four lady of the jury, find out whether she had any relationship, whether she had any discussion. But they certainly were talking about something. And, and um, again, we're, call me naive, but we just assumed everything was going to be on the up and up. Harputlian and Griffin represented Paul Murdoch in the criminal case for the boat crash that killed Mallory Beach. Both lawyers spent a lot of time with Alec, Paul, and Maggie Murdoch because of that, and they grew close to the family. I, 
I don't think America and your viewers have, have seen the graphic murder photographs of Paul, but the fact of the matter is whoever killed Paul shot him once in the chest and once in the head, and you can say it was going up or going down, but it was execution. And I've, I've known Paul since 2019. I've known Alec for 20 years, and I've known Paul, Maggie, and Alex, and Buster real well since 2019. I don't know of any man that would blow his son's head off. And I promise you, Alec Murdoch was not capable of that. I believe that in my soul, and I've never wavered from that. And so, I mean, it was very difficult. I, I was believing Alex's innocence. I was very, very disappointed in the jury's verdict. We both spent a lot of time with Paul, Maggie, and Alan. And I have in my mind's eye, um, there was a weekend <clears throat> where there was a baseball game in Columbia, and Maggie and Paul and Alec came up. And after we finished talking about some of the details of Paul's case, uh, they all walked out together. And I can see Alec holding Maggie's hand and his arm around Paul. And they always had that affectionate, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, if they got in an argument and he shot, and Paul, shot Paul, you know, once, but the second shot, everybody agrees, was either a contact wound or an in intentional wound to blow, it to, in the head. There's no coming back from a shotgun blast in the head. And his brain literally came out of his skull, hit the ceiling, and hit the floor. And both our experts agree. Whoever did it would have been covered in blood from head to foot, and the forensic evidence was inconsistent with that. We never got to that because Judge Newman spent two and a half weeks allowing the state to put in all the financial stealing and misdeeds that Alec did. By the time we got to the real evidence, the murder evidence, nobody was going to be sympathetic to him. Get it. Get back. One piece of evidence that jurors cited when finding Alec Murdoch guilty was the kennel video that placed Alec Murdoch at the kennels minutes before prosecutors say Paul and Maggie were murdered. Murdoch had told law enforcement and everyone he knew that he had not been to the kennels that night. Hey, he's got burned his mouth. I asked Harpootlian and Griffin about the big lie. It, I mean, it was surprising and it, um, and he agrees, I agree. Had, had he not lied about that, he, he wouldn't have been charged. If he was charged, he definitely wouldn't have been convicted. So, mm -hmm. you know, he, he explained, you know, the paranoia he was going through. He did have a bag full of pills in his pocket. And, 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 and you know, I mean, he was suspect number one from the minute um, Colleton County showed up. And so, you know, he got on the stand, and, and that's one of the reasons we put him on the stand, so he can explain why he lied. Um, I've accepted that, that reason, and, you, you know, I, I don't think the jurors who found him guilty, you know, thought much beyond that and didn't look at any other evidence because it, all the evidence is inconsistent with him being the murderer, as Dick was saying, the forensic evidence. Harpootlian and Griffin maintain they believe Paul and Maggie were murdered because of Alec Murdoch's drug activity. Murdoch pleaded guilty to a number of financial crimes charges in federal court last week related to his theft of millions of dollars from clients and his law firm. One of his trials on the state charges is scheduled to begin in November. And as far as the murder case goes... I, I will say Alec is entitled to a new trial. And he will get a new trial, whether it's by Judge Newman, by the Court of Appeals, by the Supreme Court, or by the federal courts. Based on the evidence that we have developed, he's entitled to a new trial. During their presentation at CrimeCon, Harpootlian and Griffin were asked how they are being paid since Alec Murdoch's money is being controlled by a court-appointed receiver. They said there was a credit for the handsome fee they received to represent Paul. They also received money from Alec's share of a Murdoch family trust and his 401k, but they said they would represent Alec Murdoch free of charge if necessary. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.